Okay, I wanted to make a video about uh, a passage in James 5, James 5, 9, or James uh, 5, 8 through 9, basically says, But you, my brothers, be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand, and do not grumble against one another, lest you be judged, for the judge is standing at the door. Uh... And I think this is very important for Christians today because I think it is so easy for us to get sidetracked and like look at what everybody else is doing in Christianity and start blaming and pointing the finger at each other. You know, the, but the Bible says we're not supposed to do that. I mean, there are things that we can disagree with the way someone's acting who calls himself a Christian or some of the things they may believe and if they're... Uh, their knowledge of a certain thing is off. We can go show them according to Scripture, but you know the Bible is very clear that we're not supposed to grumble against each other or judge one another. I mean, there are certain things we can tell, you know, from just looking, but we don't have the final evaluation on whether that person's really genuinely converted or not. We can have have some clues into, you know, yeah, this person may not be truly born again or redeemed or renewed uh, or converted, but we got to be careful when it comes to like going to people who have made a profession of faith and then just saying, well, I know you're not uh, in Christ because, you know, that's really not our place. I mean, we can like maybe show them in scripture where it talks about certain ways of living and where where that may cast doubt, but let the Holy Spirit do that. Uh, if he wants to convict their heart that they may not truly be reborn, then we should show them where, what this passage say and say, maybe go say, well, this is what the scripture says, and I'm not totally sure, you know, but I want you to examine it for yourself and then let the Lord you know, kind of more of that approach. But I do I do see a lot of people within Christian circles, they accuse each other of stuff, this and that. And, you know, of course, I'm one of those people that has been known for that too, also because I found that I also struggled with that. And this has been a, a convicting verse in my own life because I realized, okay, well, yeah, there's some th times where certain Christians in my life that I, I love and I care about, they really do get under my skin, you know, just that's the way it is with getting along with people in general. And so what we got to be careful of as believers is, is not attacking other believers because like Paul says, do you not know that you yourselves are God's temple and God's temple is sacred and he who destroys the temple, God will destroy. And so basically that's warning us, you know, in the Corinthian church, Paul was addressing quarreling and disputing and arguing and backbiting and lawsuits going on among other believers. And not only so, he was addressing, you know, a sexual immorality problem in the church and a lot of other issues. But one of their biggest issues were they were dividing. They were they were choosing which teachers they they admired more and respected. And so some would say I follow Paul. Others would say, I follow Cephas. Well, I follow Apollos. And Paul, Paul's basically saying, well, these we're just ordinary men. Now, is Christ divided? You know, you need to follow Christ. These are just men that are doing what they've been entrusted to do by the commission of Christ. And so, whether it is with someone who's who admires this teacher in Christianity, one, you know, because we do have personality preferences and we do have we do have differences on styles and stuff but you know what it boils down to is are we following Christ he's the most important thing he's the one that we're pursuing to mold our lives after and to become more like and to go into a deeper relationship with and you know these preachers that God's given are just mere people that help us pursue that goal further and, you know, when we divide over which denominations or which which uh, schools of thought and this or that, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of room for reasonable compromise. Certain things we cannot compromise on the whole matter of repentance and in faith, you know, because we it's two sided coin. We repent of our sins by turning to Christ. We can't throw out the fact that Jesus did say he was the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father but by me. We can't throw out core essentials of like that. We can't throw out 
we are saved by grace through faith, through the work of Christ and Christ alone. These are core things we, we cannot compromise on. But there's a lot of things I think Christians do, do dispute over and divide over that are not hinging upon those key fundamentals. And it's easy to get angry with each other. Because we still have that fallen, sinful nature that we have to put to death daily. We have to take up our cross daily, as Jesus said, and follow him. And part of that is we must encourage one another and build each other up, not tear each other down, as the Bible says. And so when we seek to go to a brother or a fellow believer that may be, you know, believing something's not true or maybe not living in a certain way that's reflective of their Christian profession or faith, then we should... Go gently show them, but we shouldn't say, we shouldn't attack them or try to tear them down in the process. We should try to inspire them to do better and to live up to the name Christian because it's Christ we model our lives after. And if they, and if a person really loves Christ, they're going to be aggrieved by the sins they're committing. And they're going to want to change that because if you love somebody, you do not want to do the things that dishonor them. You want to, you want to best reflect that person who you respect with the, with the greatest care. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the uh, contrast between a father who who's uh, like let's let's use this as an analogy. Let's say a father is abusive and he uh, he earns his son's respect through brute force versus a father who's kind and his his son really looks up to him and thinks the world of him and then when the son fails to you know uh, honor the father in some way the father's like yeah, I'm I'm kind of disappointed in you. And that 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 son, that second son is going to be more grieved over the fact that he he let his father down. He made his father disappointed. And that's going to make him want to change more so than than the first scenario of an abusive father that beats the heck out of his son with brute force and just tries to get him to do the right things. There's a big difference because in a relationship with Christ, we don't want to grieve him. You know, that's the ideal motivation. It's the ideal spot that we need to get to that we should be grieved when we grieve the heart of God because we love him so much and we don't want to dishonor him or his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent to pay for all our sins and to give us every spiritual blessing that God could possibly ever give. And, you know, we should totally value this and treasure this. And uh, to my regret, there have been times where I haven't done this like I should. And, yeah, it's grieving, you know, because then you see, well, you know, I don't want to dishonor Christ. Yet, you know, I'm living in a certain way, you know, that's not really respective to that goal of honoring Christ, and that should make any of us want to change. God bless.